Hello, hackers. How are you? How many of you speak Spanish? Oh, very good, very good. So I have a lot of friends. Well, thank you for being here in, in this talk. Uh, I was invited to talk about what we've been doing in, in Telefonica in terms of digitalization and I'm moving better. <laughs> oh, and a hacker, you know, I break things. Very well. Very well, it's working, no worries. <laughs> so I was invited to talk about uh, the process in Telefonica of digitalization of our company and the project of Open Gateway in which we are working heavily. We are pushing a lot of focus right now. And before that, I would like to introduce myself because I don't know how many of you know anything about me. How many of you, it's the first time that you are in front of me listening? Wow, a lot of people, very good. So. This is me on the left side. I'm the guy on the right with the tie, very handsome. This is me in the university. I study, study computer science. And one important thing to say about that picture is that I study everything that was related to databases, table spaces, optimizing queries, PL SQL queries, transact SQL, everything related to databases, but nothing related to security. Nothing related to security. But reality is that after studying in the university and putting the focus in coding and databases, 25th of September 1998, which is a very important date for hackers, one magazine was published on the internet. It was this one that you have there, published by Ram Forest Puppy, Anti-Web Technology Vulnerabilities. How many of you have read that paper? Not so many. I invite you to do that because this is the first paper about SQL injection queries. I don't know how, how many of you are familiar with SQL injection, but SQL injection has been the worst nightmare in web application during more than 20 years. And today, still, we have a lot of trouble with SQL injection. The good thing about that is that I never went to the university, I never went to the internet to learn about hacking technology, but one day SQL injection was created, and you know what? I was an expert in SQL. So with one single query of quote one equals, equals one semicolon, you can get into a web application, I was able to do three screens of SQL queries which was wonderful. So I started to, to be part of the hacking community. I started to publish techniques about how to hack web pages and web application. This is me on the right corner in the upper side. The one with Triana t-shirt in red is me in DEF CON publishing one of the techniques that we created, time-based blind SQL injection heavy queries. So this is very important because this is the two aspects of my life, databases and hacking. So after that, I started to, to work in, in the hacking community. I've been delivering talks worldwide during 15 years in DEF CON, Black Hat, TourCon, SmooCon, Echo Party. Probably more than 200 conferences about hacking techniques, and it's wonderful because it's a, it's a world that I really love. And one day, someone from Telefonica was close to me and said, hey, Chema, I want you to join Telefonica. I want to hire you. And I said, well, you don't have enough money to force me to work for Telefonica. But in reality, they have, and they acquired my company. So I joined Telefonica 12 years ago. 12 years ago. I started at the beginning with a small program. that It was called Talentum. The idea was going to the university and bring to Telefonica hackers, because we were discussing about what are, where are the digital creators? And I said, in the university, learning algorithms, learning how to code, learning how to work a uh, ABL tree or a uh, data structure or a B star tree to store data, they are in the university. So we created a, a program that was called Talentum and we were to the university to bring a lot of young people to create technology in Telefonica. So I joined Telefonica at the beginning as the CEO of 11 Paths, a small company. It was my company. We rebranded into 11 Paths. It was the company to, 
to create cybersecurity services for, for companies. And after that, I was the chief data officer in 2016 because Telefonica was looking for someone with expertise in data and with expertise in security enough to protect the data, and I was there, so Telefonica said, you. And later, in 2019, I was appointed as chief digital officer. But before everything, the first thing that they told me is, before starting to do technology, meet Enrique Blanco. Enrique Blanco is our chief technology officer, and I was in the meeting with Enrique, and he said, well, I was reading your work about security is not bad. And I said, well, Enrique, we need hacker spirit here in Telefonica, creating software, quick and dirty, test new ideas, etc." And he said, you know what? We deploy network. We are a critical infrastructure. We go to the government, we open the street, we put the tube, we deploy the fiber, we close the, the street, we cannot deploy patches. This is not software, this is our network. And I said, well, but we can do things different. So he ordered me to be in the internship for 10 years. I was an internship for 10 years in Telefonica. But today, I'm 12, so I'm okay right now. <laughs> this is true, it's not, it's, not, uh, it's not a joke, it's true. We had that discussion 12 years ago. So in 2016, we started our journey in, in to be a data-centric company in Telefonica, into the digital space. So since that moment, we have started to change everything. Everything should be done thinking in digital. So I wanted to, to explain to all the executives in the company how, what was exactly what we need to do in order to be a digital company. So I produced this video. It's only three minutes. It's created for top mind in order to understand the project because it's very complex, big data, APIs, clouds, uh, cloud software in 2016. So I tried to put all the complex uh, uh, concepts in one single video. It's three mini video, so please. As you know, Telefonica possesses a wide range of technologies, services, and applications. Our three main platforms are different from country to country, and this involves a great complexity. Each of these platforms is generating data, but each one uses its own data models and manages the data in a different way. It's as if each one is speaking its own language. And this doesn't seem very efficient for a data-centric company, does it? With the digitalization work that we've done on these three platforms in the recent years, we've achieved an ecosystem of very robust platforms that offer excellent digital services. But this isn't enough. Our clients are asking for even more. In order to achieve the speed and agility that our clients are demanding, it's important that all our technology within Telefonica speaks the same data language. By this, we mean that each piece of data, uh, be it a client's name or physical identifier, an antenna signal, or the position of a mobile device connected to our network is stored and processed in exactly the same way in every part of the group. To do this, we've been working with big data teams to build the fourth platform, a layer that allows the whole group to speak the same language. Now, I'm not going to go into detail about the fourth platform, but I do want to talk about two of its fundamental parts. Firstly, the unified reference model, the URM. This is the data model with which we store exactly the same information in exactly the same way around the world. But as well as agreeing on how we store the data, we also have to decide how we'll use it. And the common model for working with this data is what we call the fourth platform's API. When we incorporate these pieces, the URM and the API, into all our services, products, and applications, we'll all be speaking the same data language. But what impact does this have? Having built this common layer, we're now capable to build on top of it technology and applications that work globally. And by working globally, we mean that you can build it once, and then they work everywhere across the Telefonica group. You don't have to reinvent the wheel each time, which gives us agility. At an internal level, we can develop things that allow us to generate efficiencies. For example, analytical models that allow us to better manage our network and its deployment, or a churn prediction system. And for our clients, we're able to build things that revolutionize the way we interact with them. For example, services such as our new global app and smart Wi-Fi, or even something as innovative as an artificial intelligence. In summary, in order to offer our clients the agility they expect from us at a global level, and to truly be a data-centric company, we need to speak the same language of data across Telefonica. 
Well, that was the idea in 2016. Everything that you can see there is already done uh, years ago. It was a nightmare because we took the decision of not letting any new digital service to connect directly to the legacy system. They need to connect to the blue platform, the blue platform, and it forced us to create APIs for all digital services since that moment. Today, we call that uh, for platform that we use as a code name, we call it kernel, and it's quite simple. We manage identity using OpenAuth 3, which is the way that uh, in the internet all digital companies are managing identity. We use open APIs, which are the ones that we are exposing for the digital services that are coming from the capabilities that we have internally. We have data. Very, very, very important. That data is normalized. We didn't want to create a peak data. We wanted to create a peak data. So the first thing that we did was normalize every piece of data that we were going to, to uh, store in the platform. And of course, taking advantage of GDPR that was coming, we, def we defined the privacy from scratch in the, in the platform. We started to, uh, to create all digital services on top of that, and at some, to, at some point, we started to open that APIs to partner, to third party, that we were allowing them to, to capture uh, opportunities from the capabilities that we were having in the, in the platform. And at that moment, we started to, to think if this could be the way we need to manage our company in the future. Just in order to show you how it works, this is everything is cloud-based. This morning I connect to the kernels of some of our operation in real time. This is the kernel from uh, this is from Spain, and uh, as you can see, it's, it's cloud-based. We have in this example 78 nodes that are on demand, so if the operation requires more nodes, it's cloud-based, it's completely elastic. And if we have 1,442 pods in which we are running the Kubernetes, the microservices in real time. Everything is cloud-based. If the cloud goes down, we have a problem. Because of that, we have a fail-safe system, <laughs> not with the same, same cloud. So this is, this is Spain, this, 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 is, uh, this is Germany, in which uh, you can see we have four authentications per minute right now in the last 12 hours and how people are connected to the platform requirement for digital services. And this is Brazil. I took the picture this morning. They were at night in Brazil. So you can see that uh, the number of requests uh, went down. And you can see the number of, um, of APIs, uh, uh, calls that we are managing. So in this example, 678 million of customers. You need to take into account that TV, apps, uh, mobile app, Wi-Fi, data from the Wi-Fi that is stored in the cloud, everything is managed in cloud by this platform that we have today. And the most important, the 100% of data reachability. So <laughs> if that starts to went down, then we have a problem and the people in operation needs to take care about what happened. So if something was thinking that moving to cloud is not a good idea? Well, I don't think so. We've been in cloud the last five years, seven years in all our operations, and it's working very, very well. So the question that we were doing to ourselves is, we are deploying a lot of good capabilities for digital creators of the future. And these are two good examples that uh, my colleague from the network were we're uh, using. This one is using a digital webcam with VR device, 5G, edge computing, IoT, and you can ride a bike using a VR glasses and see reality through the VR glasses. So it's perfect for mixed reality, and it's a good example the, about latency, about the possibilities of mixed reality that we can provide from the network. But problem is that to create that demo, you need to configure the antenna, connect to the edge, configure the microservice. Nothing is appified. Everything is manual. And on the right side, another example that uh, our colleagues from Network work, uh, were creating for Mobile World Congress, which is remote driving 30 kilometers uh, away in uh, Barcelona circuit, and digital webcam, 5G, IoT uh, management platform, edge computing, network slicing to the circuit, F FTTTR, to the stand, so everything was perfect, brilliant technology, but it's close. So in order to take advantage of that 
capabilities, you need to go to Telefonica and say, hey, I'm a customer. Wait, wait, wait. We need to, to do a, a, a file entry for your company. Company name? And after that, a pre-sale engineer is going to call you. That's not the way digital technology is consumed today. It should be in real time, on demand, and paper use, everything. So we started to think about how to do that. And, and, and when you analyze big developer ecosystem, the ones that are taking the most of the value of the digital ecosystem, digital age that we have today, they are all of them based on APIs. 100% of the services that you have in every single cloud provider or mobile provider is consumed by APIs. And it's wonderful because for developer it's very easy. I don't need to talk to anyone. I could be a company in Canada and create a global service that is going to be consumed in, in Spain, in France, in Germany, in Singapore, in every corner of the world, and I have everything that I need to configure the experience per user using APIs. It's wonderful. Problem is when they go to take advantage of the capabilities, which is our industry. And in our industry, every single telco is fighting alone, creating their own APIs. And you know what? We are working only for rich people because the only ones that are taking advantage of the brilliant capabilities that we are deploying are the only ones that are big enough to deal with our complexity. How many of you have a partnership with YouTube, with TikTok, with Fortnite? Probably most of you. Because they are big enough to take advantage of our carrier billing, our edge computing, our uh, connection to the, to the core network, blah, 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 blah. But the small companies, they don't have possibilities. So we are creating a whole industry, investing a lot only to be taken uh, in advance for a small number of companies, which, by the way, are rich, and we are helping them to be more competitive with, uh, against startups and digital innovators. Because we have a high barrier of entrance to consume our capabilities. So we needed to, to destroy this. And the only way of doing that is to standardize our capabilities, make easy for every single developer to consume our capabilities in one single line of code, on demand, and paper use. That's it. We need to create our capabilities thinking on the developers, on the digital creators. This is the kind of network that we need to create right now. It's true, we need to deploy low latency technologies with 5G, with fiber to the home, fiber to the room. We need to deploy Wi-Fi 7 and Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi 6 and Wi-Fi 7. We need to make sure that we have computing power enough on the edge to, to match the requirements of the new artificial intelligence infused digital services that are going to require CDN, etc. And we need to make sure that our networks are programmable. We need to softwareize our network, we need to cloudify our networks, we need to make our capabilities available through APIs for the digital creators. This is our map internally in Telefonica. This is the work that Enrique, Stin, and, and my team is, is doing all the time, thinking in this. How are we going to create this new future-ready network for Telefonica. And one of the pieces is Open Gateway. Open Gateway is just that, and a standard for, for create the definition of a new set of APIs, intuitive, interoperable, and programmable, that should be developer-friendly and one single line of code. Every day we start to think, to talk, every day we are talking about that. Complexity should be com completely removed from developer. For them, should be one single line of code to configure everything. We in Telefonica signed the MOU, as, you, as most of you probably know. We uh, make available our, our uh, APIs. We are going to launch in, in two countries in Telefonica, in Spain and in Brazil with other telcos. That, uh, because the magic of this is that one single API is available for the rest of the telcos. And we started <coughs> to work with hyperscalers to be in the developer communities, also in aggregators. Every channel is good for us, for our industry. As we used to say, we sell books, which are our capabilities, and every bookstore is good for us. This is an example 
uh, in which we are working with Azure for consuming APIs. Developers just select the countries and the telcos they want to pay for, pay for that services, and later they use it in the code with one single line of code, and if consents are required in the message, uh, they are going to be able to, to configure it. That should be our way of selling products, selling uh, technology, just that, a black screen with a single line of code, and it should be money for our industry. That should be the new way of thinking of our industry. And once that you have the APIs, how many use cases you have? Tons of them. We can be, I can be here talking about a lot of use cases we are working with, with developers. I have only some of them that we did internally. This is one example. We have a smart Wi-Fi, fully API 5. It means that the Wi-Fi of our customer is, every, is completely API 5, and you can configure every single capability from our apps, from any channel, and from third-party apps. Right now, home security companies are using our APIs to enrich the data they, that they have from the house to generate better triggers in case of uh, an alarm. This is another example. We have a smart Wi-Fi. Our customers can manage Wi-Fi from TV because you have the APIs. Why not? And this is one example in which we are analyzing in real time the data that our customers generate uh, to, um, to have a better experience. In this example, this is a machine learning algorithm detecting real time connections for video, et cetera, and using quality on demand in the Wi-Fi devices to have a more stable connect connection at home when someone is working through a video conference. In this example, we open a video conference, and at the same time, as we, uh, we have the machine learning algorithm running in, in the back end, in the cloud, and at some point recognize, hey, there is a video conference. We are going to prioritize the traffic of this device for this protocol and configure automatically the Wi-Fi of our customers. One of the use cases that we are working with Meta is to, to move, to, to transform the VR device into a landline phone. That means that you can use the phone calls and, re, and, and have the phone calls that you are having at home in your VR device. We created a use, a use case that our customers, in case that they have cloud gaming, can configure a 5G um, quality on demand in the antenna, allowing them to have a better experience in, in case that we have a conjection in the, in the antenna. This is the experience without quality on the mind and mobile and with uh, quality on the mind and, mo and on mobile. Quite simple, a congestion antenna and then activating the API, you have that. But there are tons of them. We are using data from uh, data of um, conjection prediction based on, on the time that are enriching the drones platform to configure the best road for drones that are going to be beyond, beyond site. So the, the driver can configure the flight for the drone. We are using that uh, APIs also for the remote driving. The use case that we were presenting in Mobile World Congress about someone driving a car uh, remotely is right now on a startup in the States. You go to the airport, park your car, and someone remotely take control of your, of your car and goes and, and park it. And believe me, losing connectivity is the last thing that you want when you are driving remotely a car. So they are using our APIs also to to secure connectivity, but, but there are tons of use cases with point of sales, e-commerce to secure connect connections in, in the moment of transition, device location to discover when a cyber criminal is using an anti-fake uh, GPS, a fake GPS to, to pretend to be in another location. Now your customer with the data of our customer to the world of digital onboarding in which we have all data from our customer, land call ready red, drone highways in which we are going to have highways of connectivity in the cities through the US space that had been approved in Europe 
and how to onboard automatically developers that want to use that network and, and disonboard them, etc. So there are a lot of use cases. So if some of you are interested in Open Gateway and want to be part of this or want to take advantage of one of the APIs, more than happy to help because in Telefonica, we are committed to, to this project. And, and we believe that this is the, the good way of our industry because we serve to companies, we serve to, to, to enterprises, to users, but with this, with this strategy of Appify and, and standardize our industry, we are going to have a best position in the new value chain of digital services. And that's all. Thank you very much for your time. Enjoy.